So thank you for waiting patiently. We're about to get started with our program this evening. And uh, we have a few on this, and we're also going to bring up a gentleman who has been helping us here in the city build this movement to give you a, a uh, introduction to Dr. Africa. But at this time, I'd like to let, let everyone know, in the back, we have spring water, 50 cent per bottle. You see the brother here in the front drinking it. He's done that bottle. So he go back and get another one now. It's 50 cent per bottle for spring water. And that money goes towards the community building fund. And also this evening, we have a special surprise raffle. Tickets can be purchased in the back, again, at the table with the spring water. Tickets are, you get two tickets for $1. And I don't even know what the surprise is. It is a surprise for real. So please, if you would, purchase your raffle tickets in the back. And, that, and the proceeds from the raffle go towards the University of Trenton building fund. You can purchase them now or wait to the end of Dr. Africa's presentation and purchase your raffle tickets. And the proceeds, again, go to benefit the University of Trenton. So it's very important that we support this fledgling institution. And brothers and sisters, at this, at this time, what I would like to do is bring before you a strong, motivating, intelligent brother who has been working here in the city of Trenton for the past 15 to 16 years. He and his wife, Sister Amina, have been a, um, a guidepost for many of us in the city, in this struggle, and also in this movement. And the brother has come down to the university and helped us and joined on board and has been um, very beneficial to us. We appreciate his efforts. And this evening, what he's going to do is give you a, a prelude to Dr. Africa, some things that you should look for in our brother's presentation. Please listen to him, take his advice, internalize the words that he's going to present to you this evening. But at this time, I'd like to bring before you our, our brother and helper and your brother and assistant, Brother Talib Dean Abdullah. Let us receive him with a warm African Clinton welcome. throughout our ancient history. We are here tonight to see our brother, Dr. Africa, and to hear him lecture and give us some facts that we need to know about our health. But before we get into the lecture of the, the good doctor, I would like to deal with some of the things that we have been dealing with in our school at the Kim University and with Razak's books. We have dealt with or have about 50 children at our school. They are learning computer technology. They are learning about reading, writing, arithmetic, but most importantly, they're learning about themselves as African people. And this is the difference between our school and the regular schools, is that we are teaching our children about who they are. We're not begging anybody else to teach them. We're not asking anybody else to teach them. It is our duty to teach them. I can't say that I'm disappointed, but I say I would be happier if this auditorium was filled tonight to see our brother, Dr. Africa, and to hear him, but also hear the message that he brings. And our Dr. Africa does not just bring a message of just the mechanics of herbs, and how to eat to live, and what to take for a headache, and what to take for constipation, and all the good things that he teaches us in his lectures. But our Dr. Africa also teaches us to see the hidden racism, the hidden sexual messages, and the hidden oppression that's in the advertisement world, the media world, and all the things that bombard our mentality day in and day out in this Supremacist culture that we live in. 
We want to get back to Afrocentric principles and Afrocentric way of doing things. Now at the community university, we want to deal with basically building on the seven principles of Nguzu Saba. Now basically, most of us hear about Nguzu Saba during the Black History Month of February, which just happens to be the shortest month of the year. Uh, at first, it was a Black History Day that they gave us. And then it was a Black History Week that they gave us. And now it's a Black History Month that we have, and it happens to be the shortest month of the year. I believe that it's time, and uh, the brothers and sisters that I've been conversing with believe that it's time that we should have an Nguzu Saba every day of the year, that we need to practice the seven principles. Now I'm going to go over these principles. We have to begin to have African love and concern all throughout the year. We have to begin to build on the principles of Nguzu Saba. And we must do the science on Umuja, which is unity, on Kujajagalia, which is self-determination, on Ujima, which is collective work and responsibility, on Ujama, which is cooperative economics, on Nia, which is purpose, on Kuumba, which is creativity, on Imani, which is faith. And these should not be not, not no empty idealistic principles that we hang up on the wall and worship once a year. But these should be principles that we begin to build our life upon day by day with our children, with our families. And when we come together, we will come together under these principles. And all things begin in the name of the Most High. Now what is Umoja? What is unity? It is to strive for and maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. And we should work on these things not once a year, but every day of the year. And what is Kujajagalia? Self-determination. It is to define ourselves, name ourselves, and speak for ourselves instead of being defined, named, and created for, and spoken by, by others. We can cry all we want for the school board to teach black history. We can cry all we want for the school board to teach our children about what we know they should learn. But they ain't gonna do it because they're working for the enemy. And I don't need to name him because we all know him. So now we have to begin to do for self. They're cutting back on our programs that we thought were once cherished and once would never end. Now we're left to our own, to do for self. Well, Marcus taught us to do for self. And Elijah taught us to do for self. And many of our great leaders, men and women, showed us that the only way that we can survive as a people in this racist land that we live in is to do for self. So we must begin to believe and begin to build on the seven principles. And Ujima, collective work and responsibility to build and maintain our community together and make our sisters and brothers problems our problems and to solve them together. Now we may be small in this room, but we are nucleus. And I've learned that everything, everybody, every powerful body that we see in the universe has a nucleus, an essence, something that without it would not be. So everything starts there. So if we are going to be the nucleus here in Trenton, New Jersey, then let us understand what our mission is. And let us get behind Razak's books and the community university. Let us volunteer for the new programs that we would like to institute. Let the parents come out and get involved. The last meeting we had of the parents teachers meeting, we didn't have much involvement. We don't want to fall into that same old laissez-faire, lazy, Negro attitude that we've had in the past. This has something to do with us. Being in this room has something to do with us, the building of our nation. Listening to Dr. Layla Africa is not, we don't want to become cult figures. And I don't think that that's what the brother would want us to be. He's teaching us, he's giving us the fishing rod and teaching us how to catch our own fish. 
so that we will go and study and learn about herbs, about knowledge, about how to build with our people and study of our history. And if, even if Dr. Africa is not around and we love that he is here, we would like that we would still have people who would research in our community about what he has taught us, that will do the science on it, that will collect the herbs, that will come together and do the science on the herbs, their properties, their healing remedies, and that we begin to build an African-based science and medicine here in Trenton, New Jersey. So we have to build collectively, and we have to have purpose, which is NIA, to make our collective vocation the building and developing our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness before the enslavement, before we was taken from our land and stripped of our land, language, and our culture. And we need kuumba, creativity. We need everybody to bring forth every idea, every thought is important, is necessary. There's no big eyes and little U's. All of us are together in this struggle. We got to cooperate in NIA purpose, and we got to create new ways to bring the struggle to our people who are not here tonight. So those of us who are here are committed, like the brother said, we have raffle back there. We're going to have other fundraisers. We got different uh, programs that we're going to institute after our summer program, after school program with the kids. We're going to deal with teaching chess and other things to our young ones. We're going to deal with African drum class, music class. We're going to deal with herbs and the knowledge of herbs and the science of herbs in a classroom situation, hands-on, smelling, feeling, tasting, cooking. We're going to deal with trying to bring about our own theater workshop. Stop complaining. We always complain about the children being out on the street. Well, if we don't provide anything for them to come off those streets, that will gather their attention, that will get them interested, then we don't have no complaints. Until we provide and say, hey, get off that corner. He say, well, what you got for me? Where do I go? If you can't say or we can't say, well, look, get in this van. We got something going on down at the community center. We got something going on down at the community university. Come on, man, we got some free food, you know what I mean? And we got some knowledge for you, you know what I mean? And some ways that you can better your circumstance, then we're not doing nothing. We just chasing them from corner to corner. So we need Kuomba, creativity, everybody on board, giving their thoughts, giving their knowledge. And we need Imani more than anything, which is faith. Without faith, we have nothing. Without the faith that we can be better than what we've been, without the faith that there can be more people. If we can't see or envision that there can be room full of people lined up against the wall, if we can't see that, if we just see what we see and say, oh, the same old people, we be have to begin to realize that with faith in the Almighty and with faith in our ability and what has been laid down to us from our ancestors, that we can bring people out to see our lecture series, and bring people out to involve themselves in our community and in other things that are positive in our community. So we need Umuja, Kujajigalia, Ujima, Ujama, Nia, Kuumba, Imani. We need to build upon these principles and we must motivate in order to elevate. And we must elevate in order to recreate who we are. We are not a mere product of the society in which we are born. No matter how negative our environment, the Almighty Most High God has given us the divine ability to change our circumstance. It's no secret. We have the ability to recreate who we are, for better or worse. In our case, as a people, we need to build upon the positive. Let us understand one thing. All good actions start with good thoughts. The reality is all bad actions start with bad thoughts. This is not hard to absorb and comprehend. It is simply as you think, so shall it be. So how are we thinking? How are we acting? How are we speaking? The tongue is a translator of the mind, which is the heart. 
A person will speak most about what they think. It will come out naturally in their everyday conversations, whether it is money, sex, cars, sports, TV shows, gossiping or backbiting other people out of envy. We say at the community university and at Rosox Books and with the brothers that our sisters I roll with that you are what you think. As Jesus, the great prophet said, a man as a man thinketh, so shall it be. Thank you, brother man. And to add to this knowledge, a person cannot rise no higher than their highest thought. No less. And a person can high, rise no higher than their highest thought. And if you think you can be better, you can. It is all up to us. No more, no less. So the key to becoming a better, more positive, and more motivated person is to tap into our own thinking. It is not necessary to change how other people think about us, but it is most necessary for us to change our opinions about ourselves. Now at the community university, we want to build on the seven, the seven principles of Kuja Jagalia, and the seven principles which we have coined, which is we need a system based on good judgment, and we need a system based on good morals, and we need close family ties and close relationships. We need self-discipline. We need righteous goals. We need safe surroundings for our families and our children. And we need, most importantly, true, true, unconditional love for one another as a people. And if you add all these things together, it equals up to happiness, which equals up to heaven, which equals up com to completion, which equals up to peace. So, without further ado, let me get to the business of introducing my brother because I can get to talking about these things for a long time. But right now we want to introduce our brother who has traveled a long way, who I look at as a soldier in the cause of our African struggle. And the law has used him uh, in the knowledge that he has learned in herbs and history to bring that struggle to us. Now. In my studies of Dr. Africa and his books, and I've read Nutricide and African Holistic uh, Health, and I've listened to his lectures and looked at his tapes. Dr. Africa, to me, does more than just talk about the properties and purposes of herbs and proper nutrition. I mean, you will see that the good doctor is teaching more holistically than some of us may think. While he is instructing us in the ills of eating a McDoodoo burger, as he says, <laughs> he is also calling our attention to the subtile and hidden messages that hit our subconscious mind before the conscious mind can ever decipher what's happening to us. And I'm talking about subliminal sed seduction sex messages and messages of white supremacy that invade our minds in ways that would surprise you and me. All these messages are the plot of those who plot to control us. And this, to me, is the crux of Dr. Africa's message. I can hear Dr. Africa telling us it is worse than you may think. I didn't heard him say that a few times. We are going to find ourselves in a very unthinkable position if we don't start thinking. And we're heading for the 21st century. The new world order is rolling right along. The stormtroopers are in place. The falsehood is running amok. Now here we are going into the 21st century do we want to go into the 21st century as modern day mental slaves whose chains have been taken off of our wrists, our necks, and our ankles, but yet they remain around the mental? Now this is very deceiving things and very deceptive things that are going on. 
where we have become almost uh, partners in our own slavery now. Now, we don't want to be trapped in this dysfunctional state. Now, we're dealing with a kind of man who thinks that melanin has to be cut out of everything, as we learn from the doctor. Now, I look at a simple thing like brown rice, which has all the B vitamins and things in it. Now, we're dealing with a kind of man that takes the melanin, which is the brown, golden color out of the wheat, and then he bleaches that wheat and then packages, packages it in a plastic bag and then calls it Wonder Bread. Not a vitamin in it, no B complex in it, no fiber in it, nothing good in it at all. It turns the sludge in our bloodstream and stops us up. But a lot of people eat it. A lot of our people eat Wonder Bread only because it's white. They ain't did the science on it. It's deadly, but because it's white and it's called Wonder Bread, we buy it and it's advertised by them. And it kind of makes me wonder, it's a wonder we live in, eating Wonder Bread. <laughs> now I'm gonna call it Wonderless Bread from now on. Now check this out. Brown rice is bleached white, packaged and sold to us with a black man's face on it. Uncle Ben's been selling white rice for a long time. You know what I mean? And the stuff ain't even no good for us. It's denatured food. It's demelanated food. No B complex, no minerals, no fiber. Everything good in the original brown rice has been bleached out, whited out. And all that's left is a graphic product whose only value to some is that it's white. <laughs> we need to check this out. I mean, these are subliminal messages of white supremacy. And they are all around us. Yes, I do believe that Dr. Africa teaches us more than about the properties and mechanics of herbs. He instructs us in the ways of mind control and behavior modification and how food by way of nutricide is being used to drug and weaken our people. And we should give our brother Dr. Layla Africa recognition for that and a big thanks because it's more to what we see to Dr. Africa. And sometimes I see people who just want to follow him around just to learn about herbs and he will teach that and he guides in that but I see a historian in my brother and I see a revolutionary struggler in my brother and I see a brother who points out the things we need to know about how we being oppressed in this modern day and time so without further ado brothers and sisters Dr. Africa is with us here tonight and he will be lecturing on the secrets to enhance African male and female sexuality and also disease prevention and cure. So without further delay, let's welcome with a warm round of applause our brother and teacher, Dr. Layla Africa. Thank you very much. You're very kind. <laughs> uh, I give all praises to our ancestors to allow me to be here and allow us to come this far in our struggle. Uh, as uh, it's always my pleasure to be in Trenton, uh, the new Ark, is that what it's called? <laughs> the New Jersey, <laughs> which is the old Jersey, racism coming back at us, and I'm thankful for that book and all of you for being here. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, male and female sexuality and how it's being uh, destroyed, especially from a black perspective 
and things we can do to uh, prevent the further destruction of our uh, sexual system. Um, sexuality is something that is taught by culture. Sexuality is a reflection of the culture's uh, spirituality, morals, and sociological principles. It's not just something that you do. It is the expression of your culture. It is something that you are taught. You are taught how to be sexual and how to feel when you're sexual. You just don't wake up and you're born into this thing. <laughs> you are taught this. You are taught this makes you feel good, this makes you feel bad when you're little. If you do this, you'll feel good. If you do that, you'll feel bad. If you feel your head is spinning around and a little easy and queasy in your stomach, you're falling in love. Children are taught this. This is part of a sociological system. We're socialized into sexuality. Unfortunately, we're socialized into it from a European perspective. And that's where this problem comes in at. We have to purposely deprogram ourselves. We have to purposely, the brothers have to purposely look at black women's behinds and see a bowel movement come out of it. So you can stop looking at their behinds and seeing it as a sexual object. You purposely have to go around all day doing this. It just doesn't happen that just because you read a book and hear me talk about it. You have to look at a person's behind and say a bowel movement comes out of it or I'm gonna catch a fart. And you have to do that so you can stop relying on the rhythmicity of a woman's behind to describe her sexuality. Those two things do not compute, not to an African person. Then you will be able to start looking at a black woman in her face and see the spirituality which speaks of the sexuality, where we have it backwards because we were taught by the Europeans, of course. So those things are something that we deliberately have to do. Feelings are taught. Sexuality is taught. It's taught not only when you eat food, it's taught when you look at television, it's taught by how you dress. This is the way we are programmed into sexuality. You kissing each other may mean something exciting to you, but it means nothing to an Eskimo. They rub noses. So that's how they approach being stimulated. So it's a whole other way of looking at your body and your face that we have to get into. Now what I'm talking about is the um, sex organs, so I will just go over them briefly so you know where I'm coming from. I don't like to use that word when I'm giving this lecture, but these things happen. <laughs> You're all grown up. <laughs> now what we have at the top here is the uterus. And then we have the opening of the uterus, known as the Oz, or the cervix, which they call the, wi the Wizard of Oz, which is a story that refers to the opening of the uterus, which opens you up into your higher selves. That's where you get the understanding of your emotional self, of your physical self, and your physical self, where you get the tin man and the, uh, the man made out of straw. That's when the Oz opens up, and you come into your consciousness. That story is about birth. But I'll go into that as we progress. And this is the shaft of the vagina, which is longer in African women than any other race. And the lips of the vagina are uh, uh, larger in African women than any other race. And this is the bladder, which sits in front of the vagina, which is a muscle. And the uterus itself is muscle and mucosal tissue. Then we have the rectum in back and the anus. The rectum is where the bowels are stored, the manure is stored until it's evacuated. So constipation can cause a problem of migration of bacteria this way, as well as infection of bladder can cause problems of migrating of bacteria this way. So we have to keep our bladder free and our rectum, of course, emptied. Now we get into a more simpler system, the uh, male reproductive system. This is the prostate, which is actually the male uterus is made the same way as the uterus in a female. It has muscle and mucosal tissue. Then we have the bladder, the rectum, and the testicles, which are called the family jewels in stories. When they talk about these are the family jewels, they're referring to the testicles. And this, of course, is the penis and the shaft in which the urine comes out of. But I'll show you more um, over here as we progress. 
Now, the problem with the uh, sexual system is that it's part male and part female. And I believe that's what causes a lot of problems with it. It's part male and part female, which we call Haru, and we can call the female aspect Isis or Emmer. That's why uh, when you have kings in European culture, the king or pope always changes his name to a female name when he becomes a pope or when he becomes a king. They select a female name like Charles or Sam. These are female names. When they get into a high consciousness, they change their names to a woman's name. That's why the pope always changes his name when he gets to office. We have a combination of what you can refer to as positive and negative, and then you get these two halves again combining in, in your present vehicle, which is known as a male or female body. This is symbolically represented here. I'll read it to you by Tehuti, who receives the life force from the two serpents, which is your male principle and your female principle, which gives you your life force. And this is being put into that body. This story is an African story. It's just that the Europeans have somewhat stole it. Were you able to get that clearly? Okay. Thank you. Now, how this all happens is we are aligned with these tracks in our system during conception. Understanding when you're born, your earth body is put in pineal gland and when you hear your father that stimulates your pineal gland putting your, your body into earth orbit we have these major orbits or rhythmicities of our system our earth cycle a lunar cycle a solar cycle and a gal galaxy cycle the galaxy cycle is dominant even if they cut out your pineal gland this rhythm will still be in your body but we don't get into that rhythm because you have to be more or less spiritual and more or less grounded in your culture because your culture defines your, your spirituality. Now we don't worship our culture. We don't worship spirituality. We don't worship religions. We only worship the uncreated, which is God. Because anything created will go through cycles. The water, the air, you have the monsoons. Anything created goes through cycles. It goes through maturity and then it deteriorates, be it a culture, be it a physical body, so you don't worship creation, you only worship the uncreated. And this is part of the creation cycle, which we call the fetus position, which it develops into, but this is how we start. And this is when the blueprint is laid in your body. This is the blueprint or track, which receives information from the galaxy. You can only receive this kind of galactical stimulation through your pineal gland. And the pineal gland lays down the blueprint in your system which receives that, which the Chinese call your acupuncture meridians, and you, the Indian people call it your chakras. This is in your brain tissue right here, which is destroyed by alcohol, by the way, and bleach and sugar, which you call malt liquor, destroys that, and vinegar destroys that, and white sugar destroys that, and we can get into that a little later. This is your brain cells here. This is the galaxy, as you would call it that transduces this force into your body. And this is referred to as your third eye inside of your body. It's larger in African people than any other race. Your anatomical third eye. It has an orbit, it tilts, it spins, it travels around. It's floating in the third ventricle, which is amniotic, which is similar to amniotic fluid, which we call cerebral spinal fluid, which is referred to in the holy books, like the Bible, Quran, as the holy waters. These are your holy waters. And this galaxy moves. It's over top of the pineal gland, but it has its own orbit. It's really beyond uh, my verbal description. But we're talking about the pineal gland. We're talking about what regulates the sexual system. That's why we have two functions for your sex organs. One is called reproductive, and the other is called regeneration. Reproductive system is called ejaculation. The regeneration system is called injaculation. And what you're trying to do when you stimulate your sexual glands 
is to go up this glandular highway, which is sometimes referred to as Jacob's Ladder. You go up the glandular highway, going up the adrenals, the pancreas, the thymus, the thyroid, the pituitary to your pineal gland to stimulate that, and that's called regeneration. Then the energy force goes back down to your sexual glands again. That would be your testicles, the ovaries, that sort of thing. We have a glandular highway. What happens is when you're training people to breed, you only function on the glands below the, this marker here, the adrenals. You're down in the, these glands here because that's part of the reproductive system, the sympathetic nervous system response to reproduction, which I will show you. But when you're training people to breed, you're only on the lower glandular system. And unfortunately, we were trained to breed, not to have sexual intercourse. It is to their benefit to keep us that way. Now, th this is from the uh, pyramid text. This is our ancestors describing this glandular network called the chakras called the acupuncture meridians by those yin-yang people who know next to nothing about science and very little about African people. You have the ik, which is your crown, your mirror, which is your third eye. You have your shakam, which is your thyroid. You have your kepra, which is your heart or thymus. And you have your ab, which you say abdominal, abdomen. That means above, the house above your domain, domain of the sun. This is the, uh, what they call your solar system inside of your body, and when you're above the domain of the sun, your ab, they call it your ab domain, you see. And you have, you're getting down to your pancreas and of course your reproductive system, and these, this is the glandular highway, but it also describes, this is why this uh, animal looks like a dog is biting here, because he's showing the separation between the lower, what they call the lower energy force field and the upper energy force field. As represented by ancestors, when they weigh your heart to find against the feather of my ox, on the scales of justice in European culture, justice is blind. A lot of y'all say just us. What they mean is just this, just this, we in charge, you see. But we weigh it on these scales here. And then again, we show this glandular system or chakras, which are melanin clusters in your body, which are stimulated through regeneration, not reproduction. And it's shown again, which is, <laughs> which is why our ancestors did what you call corn rolling, which is symbolic of this system. To someone who does not understand the system, it is a design. All designs are language. If you know the language, it is not a design. But when you're reinforcing this information to children and, to, and you're using the same system in what they call corn rolling, which reinforces that. Again, it comes out of Africa. Everyone has stolen from us. The American Indians stole their rhythms from us, from the Jamasee and Kohitas. These were the, Ameri these were the Native Americans here before the so-called Red Man was here. They're using our beats and our clothing, and they're very racist, too. Now, I'm going to show you the systems technically. We have each system controlled by a color, each system controlled by a uh, musical note, a number, and a letter. If you look at the products that the Europeans manufacture, their biggest selling products will use these letters. They do use these colors. There's no accident. And they're coming out of this African system. Just as when they come into the black community with their police and their National Guard, they use an African military science. Whatever they're using is our stuff that's coming back at us, like country and western music is stride, rhythms created by African people. That's African music, now y'all don't like it. Like classical music, orchestras, that comes out of African string system, and then they use it, you don't like it. It's our stuff coming back again. Like the hair industry was started by African women who tried to do something with that white woman's limp hair, and they used to stand up for six and 12 hours trying to put curls in that slop. The whole salon industry was started by African women. The white women just took it over. So all I'm saying is you're our science again. It's just that we don't recognize it anymore because everybody claims everything is ours. Some of them, people even claim us as uh, their property. 
Oh, it's too sickening to talk about. But nonetheless, those, those same little things I was showing you about the intertwining of the snake, which you call the medical symbol, the, the corn rolling of the hair, all that's reinforcing the glandular network that started with the sex glands, going to the adrenals, going to the pancreas, going to the thymus, the thyroid, pituitary, and back up to the pineal gland, which regulates the rheumaticity of the body, regulates the heat in the body, reg regulates your spirituality. The more melanin, the more civilized you are, it regulates being civilized. So we have all of these systems here depending on these colors, and they use these colors. You see, down here in the lower organ system, the perineum, which is that piece of skin between the scrotum and the anus, or between the vagina and the anus, you have red. What do white women put on their lips? Red. They're using this color system to be sexually stimulating. I'm telling you, you are taught sexuality. It's not something you wake up with. We just have to reprogram ourselves and, and deliberately go about talking to ourselves so we can get out of this system. Now let me just show you the sexual response system that I'm talking about here. I'll go over slowly. You don't have to worry, I'm not going to rush here. Now, the beginning of sexual uh, intimacy, which is stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system, you're breathing more out of your right, right nostril, which is feeding into your left hemisphere of your brain. You're more active above the waist. You start breathing heavy. Now you know you start breathing heavy, okay? And your thyroid gland fires off. That gets into the ah sound. The ah is the sound that stimulates the lungs and the thyroid. That feeds energy into ah, ooh, ah. Oh. More over there, more to the left. You know all those sounds you make. <laughs> but when the lungs are uh, firing off, and the thyroid is firing off, it puts the large intestine at rest, basically. Because when you're involved in sex, you don't feel like you don't want to be eating food, and you don't have time to have a bowel movement or pee and all of that stuff, so all those other systems are shutting down in the sequence. So you have the heavy breathing, then you get into the heart. You know your heart starts pounding and all that that goes with it. And your thymus gland is activated, which deactivates your small intestines because you're not interested in digesting food at this particular time, hopefully. I mean, there are white people that put mayonnaise and mustard and whipped cream on each other. You're aware of that. That's where you get the honey buns from when they used to put honey on the, on the homosexual boys behind and lick it off. And they, and they put that into the, the vocabulary of the, of the food and they call it honey buns and, and they lick that off. I'm not going to get into all that. But nonetheless, the lips and the labia swell and the clitoris gets erect and the nipples get erect. Now this same way is, is which, how you gauge orgasm because the skin, the foreskin of the penis is going to get darker and the penis head is going to get flush and the lips of the vagina are going to get darker. This is an anatomical sign and symptom of orgasm. Then we go into the pancreas gets active. And this releases energy, and that's why you make the O sound. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I think Smokey Rod, some other people, Michael Jackson, no, I wouldn't mention it. Those, they use it in their music. Then the adrenal glands fire off because you need your muscles to contract. You need, you need to stop the prostaglandins release. The prostaglandins cause the uterus to contract, that sort of thing. And then you get into the... Uh, a, a, uh, you're doing the right uh, a little more. You know how those little things we do to get the drama going on. And the kidneys are shut down because you don't have time to pee. Not now, not now. So the vagina gets wet, the cowper glands wet the penis, which kind of gets like uh, antibiotic because you've been urinating through the, the shaft of the penis. Now this secretion from the cowper glands kind of purifies it so the sperm can come out. Now we understand that the, the Seminal glands give the yellow color to the semen, where the prostate gives the smell to the semen. And this is the ways you gauge whether the, the, the reproductive system in the male is starting to degenerate by the smell and by the color. Now, 
we enter phase two of sexual intercourse, which is the parasympathetic nerves, the system response. This is more breathing from your left nostrils, which stimulates the right hemisphere of your brain. Now you're down into more below waist activity. The pupils or genital bones and the cranial bones get relaxed and start to separate and they go into an orbit. They have this shift and they start going into a, like an orbital kind of dance. That's the pupil synthesis bone, is that bone just above your penis and just above the uterus. That bone starts to separate because it's, it's a, like a hundred little bones in between this bone. It looks like your skull is one massive bone, but between each plate in your skull is little bones that allow your skull bones to move and shift according to the planets, according to the melanin's rhythmicity. All it's a rhythmic cycle here. That in inactivates your excretory system, which is basically waste. We're back to urine and all that sort of thing. Then your liver gets active, which helps get rid of impurities in your system because you don't want to have impure egg and sperm and all that. So the liver is getting rid of whatever waste is floating around. And it also is feeding your brain and feeding your system because your liver stores about six hours uh, reserve supply of energy to keep you going in between meals, basically, and through the night. And that in inactivates your gallbladder. So during all this process of sexual arousal, the blood rushes to your muscles. But once the muscles have had its limit, that's what we call threshold, then the muscles go into relaxation. It reaches threshold, and goes into relaxation, and then you get into activating your pineal gland, which, as I refer to, is uh, regeneration or ejaculation. So the first part, which is sympathetic nervous system response, is the breathing response, and the parasympathetic nervous system response is a regeneration response. The sympathetic nervous system response is also referred to as the male principle or siren and the parasympathetic nervous system response is referred to as ICs. Now, traditionally African people did not have sex when they were angry with each other. Or when you're upset. Or when you're sick. I consider having a cold being sick. I consider bumps on the face being sick. I consider dandruff being sick. I am considered weird. But in any case, people do not have sex when they're sick. You know, like you, you've got all this snack coming out your nose, don't be, you know, please, you know. No sex when you're breastfeeding, no sex when a lady's pregnant, and I'm not gonna mention no sex when a lady's menstruating. No sex before and after a meal. If you have sex just before the meal, then the blood supply is gone to your reproductive organs, it's not gonna go to the meal. And then do you eat, you're gonna shift the blood from your reproductive organs and shift it to your stomach, and therefore the reproductive system is gonna get weak. It's gonna cause it to deteriorate. So you don't wanna have sex just before you exercise, or just after you exercise. You're shifting into two different systems here. You're going from parasympathetic to sympathetic, and that's gonna drain the reproductive system. No sex during storms. No sex during solstices. No sex when there's high barometric pressure because that decreases the blood supply to the reproductive system. You know, I'll, I'll answer questions I finish. To solve relationship problems, don't use sex. You know, some people get mad with each other and they figure if they have sex, that's gonna solve it. You know, that doesn't solve anything. You don't use sex to medicate yourself. A lot of us are addicted to sex. We have sex when we don't feel like having sex. We just had sex because, damn, my penis is there. Guess I use it. We, we, you, if you're having sex when you don't feel like having sex, or having sex because you're upset, or having sex because you, then you're into sex addiction, which is what the Europeans want you to have. The problem is that with the African sexual system, it's very high in something called melanin. And since it's high in melanin, it attracts, the melanin grabs these impurities and bonds it at a higher rate to the male and female reproductive system. It bonds codeine, morphine, caffeine, nicotine, strychnine, atropine, that's that stuff that people spray in their nose when they have asthmatic attacks or respiratory emphysema or something of that sort. Agent Orange, 
which has different colors. They use that during Saudi Arabia as well. They just didn't use orange. Amphetamines are speeds. When you see epinephrine on cough medicines, that's a speed that's destroying your reproductive system. Quaaludes, tetracycline, all these chemicals bond to the reproductive system and cause a lot of problems. But before you can have sex, you got to have a relationship. So I might as well just briefly go over this. Even though there are many people that have relationships with themselves, which the Europeans call masturbation, when you're exploring your own sexuality. Anytime you send a little boy to the room by himself and he smiles, you better look out. You're trying to punish him and he's happy. You can't even get the door open. You know, please. So first we have to have a relationship. Now, a relationship is a process. It changes. It develops. It has growth crises. It's a, it's a process. It's not a destination. People look at their relationship like they look at a watch. It, oh, three years from now, we're supposed to be at this spot. If I'm not at this spot, there's something wrong with you. And then they start blaming each other when it's a growing process. The person grows, the marriage grows, and they're growing simultaneously. There's so many cycles going on. It's a process. It requires a spiritual ritual in harmony, some prayer or whatever the ritual you want to do in harmony with each other. This is the part that kind of throws people. Men usually talk to express ideas, then their feelings. Men grow differently from women. And this is how our ideas grow and our feelings grow and our sexuality grow. Men go from childhood where you're just sensing your whole environment, exploring everything, then you go into youth, when you're thinking about all of these things. Then you go into manhood, when you start re defining yourself in relationship to your culture and reality. Then you go into adulthood, when you start defining yourself in relationship to your, your, your culture, which is a personality of a civilization. But women, they talk to express their feelings, usually, first, and then the idea second. So when you're in a conversation with each other, you're trying to express an idea, she's trying to express a feeling. You say, no, you're wrong. You, you're telling her, no, her feeling is wrong. Big mistake. Her feeling is correct. And if you keep going on, she's going to throw one of these on you, which means you've got to come correct because this is the right angle. If you keep going, she put both of those right angles, you know you're wrong. Twice is wrong. So the feelings that she is expressing is correct. Your ideas are correct, but they're not matching what's going on here, <laughs> you see. Women grow in this sequence. They go from childhood to womanhood. That's why you find this big clash. The men are in youth. The, the, your little girls are in, already into womanhood. Then they go into youth. It's because the elements are different. They go from water, they go from earth to water, to air, to fire. And that sequence, if you want to use those kind of uh, ways of understanding, you have to communicate, listen, and respect each other's thoughts and feelings. And most of all, behave in public. Folks be, you know, you know, you know something went on with the couple because he got an attitude, she got an attitude, you gotta behave in public. I'm telling you, don't be criticizing don't be arguing and giving those little looks, you know. I used to read for the blind. That's what I used to do when I was in college. I used to tutor algebra and read for the blind, record textbooks and stuff. So I read a whole lot of books I didn't even want to read. And I, one of the blind people I had was visually handicapped. I think that's what the crackers call it now. Well, it, cracker means the person who cracks the whip. And that's why we call white people crackers. But in any case, uh, visually challenged, okay. In case, I was over this blind dude's house. So, because uh, <laughs> he told me to come over because he had to do this book because he had this homework to do. So I'm over there, and him and his wife had an argument. He can't see, but she can see. He said something to her, and she was just like that. And the man was blind. But I'm just saying, people just don't know how to behave. I have to be mindful of this. Watch your words. I mean, when you argue, 
or criticize each other is supposed to bring you closer together. Any argument that is not bringing you close together, just cut it off. Any criticism, the whole objective of criticizing each other is to bring you closer together. It is not to beat the other person up. So you have to watch your words. You got to play fair. You know, you know, brothers, when they get, you know, you don't talk about somebody's mother. I mean, there's certain words you got to watch in a conversation. And even when you're arguing with your mate, you got to watch your words. Do not curse or interrupt. Let them finish the whole three chapters of Roots. And then you say what you have to say, but don't interrupt. <laughs> your mate is your companion. Just because you feel a certain way don't mean they feel a certain way. That's not your clone. That's your companion. Your mate is not perfect. They have wounds. People have good and bad habits, which may never change. If you accept the best of them, you might as well accept the rest of them. Your mate is not psychic. You know I wanted that. You know, no, they don't know any of that. They're not psychic. They're not married to Dionne Warwick. Chill. <laughs> Say please to each other. Say thank you. Say good morning. Say good afternoon. Glad to see you. People never have enough love and attention and cuddling. There's never enough. Forgive each other. You know, it's hard to do. But we forgive them crackers, and we can forgive each other. Just forgive each other. I mean, even if you don't mean it, just work at it. Just, just say, I forgive you, and just go in the closet and cuss the woman out if you want. But I'm just trying to say, forgive <laughs> and learn to compromise. You have to, it's, The way these marriages work is a compromise. You're always compromising. And you always give it more than the other person. That's just the way it's going to work. Just compromise. Love yourself, recognize your gifts and talents and faults, and have a hobby. Don't throw away your personal life as you married. You still have a hobby. You still have your own life purpose. And you got to witness the other person's insoluble. Some things a person can't solve. They may have been intelligent just to make the mess, but they're not intelligent enough to repair the mess. Some things they just cannot solve. So you just witness it, but don't be a part of it. You know, if they want to step and, and trip and fall down, just witness it. Say, well, don't say, I told you so. Just witness it. And say, well, I hope you do better. You know, encourage them. <laughs> Have family meetings. Discuss the activities, the budget. Now, these are things you do not do. You don't want to do this. Do not say, you never listen. Heard that. Do not say that. Because what that means is I know who you are. And I don't need your version of the story. Yeah. You always say that. See, I know what you're going to say, and I don't need your version of the story. Never use the word but. Always say and. Don't say, I agree with you, but. You say, I agree with you, and this is my opinion on what you said, but don't say but. Don't get into that uh, homosexual stuff in the conversation. <laughs> and don't combine a series of past arguments. I mean, that's like, don't, don't even do that. Because you, you know that's not fair. Somebody does something wrong, you say, well, now it's time for me to bring in everything else I've been meaning to say for the past two years. And they bring up all of this luggage, and you wonder where all of this stuff come from. All I said was I forgot to wash the car. You, if it was my gun, you know, brothers be sneaking it in, you know. Everybody be, oh, well, maybe they do. I don't know. Stay with one issue at a time. Don't be jumping all around. First, you want to talk about you ain't doing right. Second, you're talking about you took the cover from me last night. And what about last year? All, don't jump all around, it's confusing. Stay with one issue at a time. Remember, you are teaching the person you're talking to. Just pretend they're there in treatment. You know they're mentally handicapped anyway. Just pretend you're just treating them. 
think your mate is totally aware at all. Don't think that they're totally aware of their own behavior and totally aware of yours too. But most don't think that your mate is totally aware of that behavior and totally aware of your behavior too. Just explain things. Tell how you feel. Be brave. Ask questions. And don't feel because you had sex with somebody that you all of a sudden know them. My God, please. <laughs> sex doesn't mean intimacy. Those are two different things. Think love will give you everything. Do not think love will give you everything. No, no, no. You may get 75% of your love needs met from your mate, 75% of your attention needs met from your mate, 75% of your social needs met from your mate, but that's, you're not going to get everything. Sometimes God gives you one gift at a time. You want the whole thing at one time. And don't become an expert psychotherapist. I mean, please, people be analyzing people all I'd be wondering where to get all this psychological training from. I worked at that stuff for 10 years. And they'd be running down all this. No, what you, I, I, I saw where you were coming from. Negro, please. <laughs> Just say you're angry and you feel like blowing off some steam. It's awesome steam. And please, don't go to bed angry. Whatever happened, apologize. Don't go to bed angry. Wake up in the middle of the night. So, I just thought I'd go over a few things. That's not everything of a relationship. That's just a few of the things. Now, I was talking about those melanin clusters in the vagina and the ovaries. When you take chemicals, caffeine, nicotine, it bonds to the melanin. It's just the melanin clusters inside the vagina and the ovaries and the uterus. And the chemicals go in there, especially something like Tylenol, or aspirin, that lowers the amount of blood that goes to the uterus and prostrate. And it bonds to the system like that. Very bad. Now, I know I talk a lot about this prostrate, so <laughs> just trying to give you an idea of what it really looks like. This is the bladder. And this is the prostate in the man. And this is the seminal vesicle. That's the one that gives the, the, the semen as you call it, the ejaculatory fluids, its color makes it yellow. The prostate gives the, the ejaculatory fluid its odor. And this is the bladder. That's why when you're retaining bladder, holding your urine, it's a big problem because it helps bacteria to grow. And that bacteria can migrate down to the, to the prostate. I don't want to get too technical. Uh, I appreciate it. Now I want to show you how, what happens when this prostate is overworked. When you're having sex out of cycle. You know, sex when the moon is full. Sex when you think of blue, like the blue bull on that uh, malt liquor. This is the prostate. It's open now. But when the prostate gets inflamed, like here, it shuts off the, the urine coming from the bladder and then you get the urine retention and the urine stays in the bladder too long and, and then you get into a urinary tract infection and the infection migrates up to your kidney and then your this kidney will start wasting away so you really have to let this uh, all its successive sex go because it's just damaging the system now then we can come back with the nutrients some that you may need, just a few just to let you know there are things that you can do. You can take a zinc, uh, that's 80 milligrams a day, but usually 50 milligrams three times a day would be in a therapeutic range. Bee pollen, some fellows like to take that for benign uh, prostate problems, beginning of problems. And garlic, of course, all of this form of for those people who want to keep their friends. It goes to, good for cleaning the system, it acts as an antibiotic. And then we have, some people like to take the uh, 
glands of the pigs and cows and they think that that prostrate gland would help that prostrate gland. That's the European system of eating uh, uh, flesh. And vitamin A is good for infections and vitamin E, which is known as the sex vitamin. Then we have brewer's yeast, which is mostly used for the B complex and it's high amount of zinc. But what I use a lot of is pumpkin seed oil capsules because I'm gonna get the zinc in that. I use a lot of that, and I may use a lot of less than about 1,200 milligrams three times a day in calcium, magnesium, and B6, and vitamin C. But I do use herbs such as salt palmetto. You might as well just know salt palmetto. That's the one. I want you to know that one. Salt palmetto is what I use for prostate problems. I had mentioned this uh, malt liquor beer thing briefly. I just thought I'd show it to you since black men are the highest consumers of this poison. It has methanol in it, which is wood alcohol. It has ethanol in it, which is starch alcohol. And it has butanol in it, which is petroleum alcohol. It has three alcohols in it. The ethanol, of course, is explosive. It damages the liver, kidney, and the sex organs, so does methanol. Aside from the fact that all alcohols destroy brain tissue and create the pineal gland. Then we have isobutanol, uh, let me get down here, maybe I should want to think. This is also a poison. It's a natural gas alcohol. That's the fourth alcohol in this malt liquor. And these are trace poisons put deliberately. They're higher in malt liquor than any other beer. So we have these three alcohols. I mean, you, you thought it was just coming from the barley, huh? <laughs> you thought they were just making the alcohol from barley and putting little hops in it. No, those days are over. They make the alcohol from wood alcohol, the barley, from the petroleum alcohol, from the gas alcohol. I mean, all of this is just going in your system. Aside from the fact that white sugar is addicting, so they put sugar in the beer, white sugar. And of course, sugar is mostly nitroglycerin anyway. It causes your blood cells to explode. And it causes diabetes and blindness, and of course, it's addicting. Then they put acetaldehyde in it, which paralyzes your muscles and nerves, and kills your brain cells, nerve cells, and destroys the lungs, digestive organs, and sex organs. Then they put synthetic histamine in there, which causes swelling of the tissue, skin rashes, headaches, low blood pressure, digestive problems. Then they turn around and put phenol in it, which is carbolic acid, which is another poison, which causes your lungs to collapse, cause paralysis, and things like that. Then they put propanol in it, which is a poison, narcotic, a toxic gas, and it's used for disinfectant, and it also causes cancer in pigs, cattle, and rats. Then they put isopentanol in it, which is an alcohol, which causes poison, irritates your eyes, ears, lungs, and they put cobalt in it, which kills your digestive system. And lead, of course, causes nerve and brain damage. You've heard about the lead poison with children. I don't have to go over that, do I? And that's put deliberately in the beer. Then they put iron in it, synthetic iron, which can cause constipation. <laughs> you take it. it. causes skin diseases, hypotension, and restlessness. Then they put carbon dioxide in it, which causes high blood pressure and lung diseases and digestive problems and they sell it to you and they call it slit malt liquor bull because it's full of bullshit really now this is the melanin centers in the uh, pine penis and epididymis which is where the sperm is stored until it matures usually takes up to 72 days and then you have another sperm storage spot here then you have the bladder this is how the system looks on the side view, but most of these, these dark areas, what I'm showing to you here, are the melanin cluster centers, which all of those poisons I showed you in the beer gravitate to and bond to, which causes the system to deteriorate. Now then, when I was uh, going early, I was telling you how all these systems came out of Africa, all these sexual systems that you may read about, the Chinese, the Japanese, all this came out of Africa. Because when our ancestors were teaching everyone, we had peace on earth. As long as we were teaching the people in India, teaching the people in China, teaching the American Indians, we had peace on earth because we dominated the earth. Once we let our domination go, fighting is everywhere. Everyone is using our culture, but they don't know how to deal with culture because it's on a higher frequency. We're the ones that introduce culture and civilization to the world because we're the ones who could carry that responsibility. They're trying to be civilized and they don't have the melanin to deal with it. So they end up fighting the hell out of each other. They're very primitive people. But nonetheless, we taught everyone what they know. 
and they abuse us for it. I'll go over high blood pressure later. Now the problem with our sexual sinners system is we can't feel what we should be able to feel because the system is so constipated with waste. They don't vibrate at a higher force. So we don't feel what we should feel and we're trying to feel this feeling. So we have more sex to try to feel this feeling but we can't get it because we're basically embalmed. We're embalmed with waste. We got waste clustering up our cells, our brain. So we're walking around half dead and we're trying to make some kind of live feeling in our body so we're just jugging, I mean, having sex a lot, and it's just not working too well. I'm using a medical term for waste, which we call toxicity, which symptoms of that are constipation, fatigue, gas, puffiness, nausea, dizziness. And when it's trying to get out of your body, you call it acne and fibrocystic breasts and uterine fibroid tumors and prostate disease and things of that sort when it's trying to get out of your breath. That might be clear for you. Now, let's just say we're trying to gauge um, how uh, alive the male sexual system is. Now, we know we can do that by the angle of the erection. It's according to the angle of erection how vital the system is. Erection in the boy is pointing straight up, they can pee in their face. This is the angle of a virile man. But as the angle starts going down toward the ground, the system is deteriorating and going, finding its way down into the ground. Not very hard to, to figure it out. Uh, so maybe some of your brothers want to cover it up when it does get that way, so won't nobody know how bad off you really are. You know what I mean? I mean, or else you can just use your hands. See, very viral, hands like this, just, just like in the, in the picture here. Very viral, your hands like that. And in your 20s, the angles is like that. In your 30s, like that. 40s, 50s. But most men reach this angle when they're around 30 now. When you go on that angle, uh, well, As I was talking to a 60-year-old lady once, trying to do some therapy on her, she said, that's my husband, but I'm still a woman. <laughs> so, <laughs> she just told him she was going to the bowling club. Anyway, when this erection occurs, there's a lot of things that are going on. See, the, the testicles are rising up and the scrotum is getting like this. You get these phases of the behavior of the penis. As the angle increases, the scrotum moves up closer to the body, you see, and then ejaculation occurs. You have to have this cycle, cyclical movement of the testicles. It's sort of the same way that the reproductive system of the female works. It works by this cyclical pulsation. When you're having a sexual penetration, you, the penis press against the eyes or the cervix of the uterus and it causes the uterus to move back and forth which causes the muscles that hold the uterus which we call ligaments to swing the uterus and that swing of the uterus stimulates the whole pelvic girdle so the stimulation of the pelvic girdle is part of the sensation of sexuality of women but the male penis is divided up in sections just like you have the acupuncture meridians in your body, you have certain sections of the penis related to certain organs in your system. You have the heart, the lungs, which is the head. You have the spleen and pancreas, the liver, the kidneys. And sensation varies in each area. Some men get more sensation from the liver area because their liver is weak. Some of them get more sensation from their lean and pancreas because their digestive system is weak. And when you're around polluted air, you probably get more sensation from the head of the penis. It just goes that way. I know you thought it was just a, a penis, but it's more to it than that. And of course, the erection and the ejaculatory response is not triggered by the penis head, the glands penis is triggered by the frenulum, which is a pyramid-shaped area on the underside of the penis. This is where the orgasm is triggered. 
Now, to stop that sensation, premature ejaculation, which is a sign and symptom of deterioration of prostate gland, some men take their penis out of the vagina and squeeze it so the nerve message can't go to their uh, prostate and trigger erection. Then we have exercises for the erect penis to increase endurance. I am not going to demonstrate any of these drawings, by the way. <laughs> People looking at me. <laughs> Please. I may be medical, but I ain't that medical. I'm explaining a lot of things. <laughs> I'm gonna go there. This is what I was calling the berry that's used for treating a prostate disease. This is saw palmetto. This is what I use to treat prostate problems. Now then, when I was referring to excessive ejaculation, I was referring to the male rhythmic system. In order to time how many times you should ejaculate, Within a week, you multiply your age times the number two. So if you're 20 years old, you can ejaculate every four days. If you're 30 years old, two times 30 is six, that's every six days. If you're 70 years old, let's just forget about it. No, I'm just teasing. You have to nourish your system if you want to go excessively. Injaculation, ejaculation, prolongation of arousal and longevity. This is what we call the sensitive spot in acupuncture meridian. This is the spot where the triggering occurs at. Just touching that spot can decrease the sensation or it can advance the orgasm. Now this is what we call the whole back. This, every time you do a so-called holdback, every time you penetrate and you have sex and you're reaching an orgasm, you pull your penis out and don't ejaculate, we call that a holdback. And for each holdback, it elevates you higher and higher. This is getting into sexual regeneration. Let me raise that up for you so you can see the holdbacks. The first time you hold back, it strengthens and energizes the body. The second time, it strengthens the eyes and ears. Third time, the immune system. Fourth time, the internal organs. Fifth time, the circulatory system. Sixth is the bones. That's used for treating arthritis. Seven is the muscular tone. Eight is develops the strong aura. We're getting into this. Yeah. Then nine heals all sicknesses, and then we get into the tenth holdback, which is the pineal gland. And I mentioned before, the man comes completely psychic and very spiritual, since the pineal gland is fully energized. So we can do one holdback a day, or we can do them all at one time, or we can space them out over a week. Well, for those lesser, we can try for a year. We understand the holdbacks. This applies to ladies as well as men. It's just, it's not just a man thing here. It takes two to tango. Now, as I mentioned before, when the penis gets erect, the scrotum thickens, the testes rise, you get that flush darkness of the skin, the penis tip and testes swell. It's a sequence, it's a rhythm. Everything is controlled by rhythm and rhythm is produced by the pineal gland. This is the rhythmicity of the system. Now then, I'll just go over a few of these herbs here right quick for you. To increase the sperm count, we use sarsaparilla. Blood in the urine, which is a sign of prostate problems, as well as the urinary tract infection. We use horsetail, buchu, and comfrey. In large or weak prostate, we use echinacea and pigeum, or echinacea and horsetail, saw palmetto. Just remember saw palmetto. If you have any of these problems, just go to your saw palmetto. If you increase your sperm count, use sarsaparilla, what some people call sarsaparilla. 
And of course, for the emergency erection, I use histidine. And take 2,000 milligrams in the evening. In the morning, you will have erection. Histidine. Histidine is an uh, amino acid. <clears throat> That's not election. I'm talking about erection. Uh, Guidelines for healthy eating. <clears throat> and things that deteriorate your reproductive system are flesh. Because once you cook it, it becomes a chemical. It is no longer a food. It is cooked. It causes the nutrients in it to be too hard. And basically it's cooked pus and blood. And so now we have a, basically a contaminated soup that we're eating, which we call animal flesh. And then we have starches, which we mentioned you should stay away from the white flour, the white bread, the white rice, the, the biscuits, the white pasta, the pizzas, all the refined carbohydrates, the white rice, white grits, white flour things. And of course, dairy products, the milk is heated up and it turns it into a kind of a wax and a kind of a glue, which we call casein, and they use it for making glue. And the sweeteners, all of them, aspartame, NutraSweet, all of them are bad for you. To, new, to be able to metabolize the sugar, the sugar in an orange, if you would take that sugar out and eat it, then you would need all the water that's in the, iron, in the orange and all the vitamins and minerals that are naturally in the orange to digest the sugar because that's the way God put it together. If you took all the sugar out of the watermelon, in order to, for your body to digest that sugar while, without causing you any harm whatsoever, you have to have all the minerals that, and vitamins that were in the watermelon along with all the water, and then it would not cause your body any harm. But once you take that sugar out of the plant, even if you let a bee do it for you, let the bee be your pusher, make the honey, take the sugar out of there for you, or you let the white boy do it, or you cook some maple syrup, which is very mildly sweet, just boil it and boil it until it's sweet, or you get some NutraSweet, or you get some aspartame, all of those are sugars, and all of them cause the same problem, weakness of the small veins and arteries, which leads to blindness and kidney failure and gangrene, rottening of the feet. Sugar is sugar. Uh, I want you to start focusing on the guideline for healthy eating, which is fresh fruits and vegetables, steamed vegetables, brown rice, whole wheat, rye, the way God made things. And dried fruits if you must, dried fruits, and some people use them as snack dried fruits with raisins and nuts and that kind of thing, dried apples. These maintain a healthy system. Now, I want to show you the female reproductive system. We're dealing with the ovaries. I showed that to you earlier. The ovaries are here. We call these appendages of the uterus. This is the uterus, two arms, two legs. Yeah, in ancient times, we call these the legs of the uterus. This is the womb coming out of Greek mythology because they thought since the woman's penis was cut off that she had a wound. Weird Europeans. This is the opening to the uterus called the cervix or oz, and this is the vagina which is muscle. Now there are meridians within the female reproductive system relate to internal organs themselves. From the picture you, you saw the uterus, then at the opening you have the heart and lungs, the pancreas, this is the pancreas section of the vagina, the liver section of the vagina, the kidney, and the opening, which we call the cervix. They're related to acupuncture meridians or reflexology zones of the vagina. The, the whole vagina is not the same amount of sensitivity. It's based on what organ is strong, which organ is weak, which section of the vagina is being very overly stimulated. Now then, uh, waste gets in the system and you get into this kind of a thing. Where the waste irritates the skin, the skin gets inflamed, it starts cooking, you get pus in there and you get waste trapped in there, it's banging against the healthy cells. 
and you get into these kind of internal bumps which we call cysts and tumors. These are the various types of uterine fibroid tumors which over 60% of all black women have in America. Over 60% of all black men have prostate problems, which is the same. We have the serious fibroid, we have the pendunculated the subserious fibroid. It looks like a tree and it twists and causes pain. Any kind of reproductive problem will cause back pain and pelvic pain and pain that goes down the leg. Even in men, if they have prostate problems, they're going to have back pain. Just don't know why their back go out on them, they say. Now, during the basic sexual intercourse, the, the uterus starts moving. It doesn't stay in, in, in position, just as the testicles don't stay in position. Everything is in a cycle. Everything is moving because it's part of creation. The uterus has to move down. It's originally here, but it moves down. The skin gets fleshy, and it moves down and forms this cup here that catches the sperm. And this cup is loaded with what you call melanin, and it vibrates the sperm and puts it on another frequency. Sort of like the melanin around the nipples that tunes the milk before it passes out into the child's mouth. And that's why the aura around the lady's nipple changes when she's breastfeeding because it changes differently for each child as she's breastfeeding. And that tunes the milk for each child. So we have this melanin area here that vibrates the sperm before it enters into the uterus itself. Now we have these traditional kind of herbs that are used for these kind of illnesses. Mostly endometriosis is, is very dominant because that's what causes fallopian tubes to, to get ruined in 60% of the cases, the heat. The inside of the uterus is called the endometrium and it gets heated up from waste. And once it gets heated up, it causes pain before menstruation, pain after menstruation, mid-cycle bleed. It causes the, 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 the temperature to cook the fallopian tube. So we use these herbs, the burdock, saw palmetto, feverfew, white willow for pain, comfrey to heal the area. We use these herbs to heal the condition because it can be healed. We use herbs for uterine bleed, to strengthen the uterus when the ligaments don't support it and it prolapse from being overweight. And then we have the PMS, which is a collection of sim symptoms. It can be a combination of endometriosis and uterine bleed. When you combine symptoms together, we give them these kind of ballpark names known as premenstrual syndrome, which means I don't know what it is in medical terms. And let me skip over that and get to the, uh, the various uh, therapeutic values of positions. First, I want to show you some of the uh, herbs that I use to treat female disorders. We have the, uh, the one with the blue background is chase berries. It's an African plant. It's used for the same kind of uh, problems as premenstrual, premenstrual syndrome, for uh, menopause, for menstruation problems. We have Dunkwa, which is below that. This is Dunkwa. These are very popular. These are the two most popular ones. I use more chase tree berries than I do Dunkwa, but these are the ones I use a lot of. Although we do have American Cranesville, but I don't use that much of that. These are used to treat a multiplicity of problems with the female reproductive system. Very pretty medicine. Now with the female system, there are acupuncture meridians right around the labia itself. You have what we call what you would call Jacob's Ladder in Christian terms. We had that uh, dog that was biting those little, I don't know if you remember the first one I showed. Each one of these, this is the lower numbers. Remember I was referring to the lower consciousness and as you go to the higher consciousness, the opening of the cervix is the opening of the dark chamber or the, what you call the, the black dot. So now we're going into the higher you know, evolution of sexual stimulation in the vagina on these meridian points. Now, when you get engorgement with blood, which I'm showing you here, this is the normal uterus, then it gets engorged with blood, which thickens the endometrium of the uterus. When the egg is released from the ovaries here, it's caught by the frimbium, and it goes down the fallopian tubes, and usually it is fertilized within the tubes, and then it implants in this tissue. Whether the egg is fertilized or not, it will always implant. 
but endometrium, endometriosis causes the tissue to get kind of tough and scarred so the uh, egg won't stay. It gets e ejected. Because of inflammation, a hormone is released, we call it prostaglandins with the anti-inflammatories and causes the muscles to contract. The semen, the ejaculatory fluid of the man is high in prostaglandins. It causes contraction of this tissue here. The problem is that we use uh, menstruation uh, as a uh, political tool, mostly set up by the European doctors coming out of their, uh, Cal Cal I think it was the Caledonian, Chalcedonian cult. Uh, in the 13th century when they had the, uh, the bubonic plague, when they killed about, it was about 25 million Europeans died during that time uh, from the bubonic plague, as they call it, the blight. Uh, around 19, 1918 and 1919, 21 million Europeans died from a cold, which they call influenza. But just before these major things here, the farmers attacked the women during, before the 13th century because the women were in charge of European society. As I alluded to before, that's why the white boys changed their names to women's names. The highest form of leader was always a homosexual leader in European society, Plato, George Washington, and they all dressed like what they are or tried to be, uh, however we want to do that. So they um, used menstruation as a way to control the women, and now they use, they use PMS as a means to control the women. And it's based on this cycle here of menstruation. The menstruation starts in here, and you have this un the fertile days are here. These are the days when you can conceive. But before the days and after the days, you have these symptoms, which is called premenstrual symptoms. And that's when the mood changes and uh, people start snapping at you for no reason. And you always seem to be saying the wrong thing. It's because the lady's trying to get energy from the man. And the only way to get that, if you can't get it in a nice way, just get it in a negative way. The lady's just trying to get energy from you to help her through the crisis. And she sometimes uses snapping activities to do that. Now, we have been introduced to positions of intercourse, mostly from the missionary position, the, you know, the old rape position of the white boys, which is a fairly good position. But nonetheless, these are the primary positions that African people use because we were trained by the white people on how to have sexual intercourse. Now, but there are a variety of positions that are used, and each one of them have different purposes. Now, the Europeans mostly use them for acrobatic kind of things, and they sometimes use uh, chains and whips and animals to participate with them. They use a lot of things. You have to go to one of their uh, sexual enhancement shops and you'll see these electrical devices. And uh, It's really kind of weird. Uh, but nonetheless, these are the positions that are used for acrobatic reasons. Today, most people just get in all these positions to show that they can get in all these positions. But they don't know the purpose of these positions whatsoever. Uh, let me show you. This is the one that, that's very popular. Spike Lee made his money off of that one and his she got a habit thing. When the man raped the lady in her behind. He always did a whole lot of perverted stuff in his movies. I don't know why y'all like that man. Beats me. Now these positions are rim originate from the goddess Newt. This is where you get this position from. This is the wheel of life position, these sexual positions have a spiritual connotation. It's just that we're not bringing them all the way back to the Africa. We're not defining them by the African dictionary. We're still using Webster's version of English when we should be using the African version of English. I mean, what is your name? Your gnome, your gnome, which the Europeans say name. I present myself. How do you present yourself? How does God present you? Itself. I present God as Laila. That is my known. That's what that means. That's why you say the. Of what state? That's what the word the means. We say the. Of what state are you in? What is your known? What state of God are you in? 
But when you use Webster's version of the dictionary, it's going to lead you back to European culture, which leads you back to your domination by the Europeans. We have to start using the African version of English. I do not accept the Europeans' usage of English. They're very primitive anyway. And remember you saw that little position here? That's the God give in the spinal twist. Twisting the head. Let me go back to the drawing. I wish I could show both of them to you at the same time. This position. It comes from Africa. It's just that we are not, we're a long way from home. Some of these sayings I have here, I got from, these are African sayings about sexuality. Son, sex is a thing of bodies, not of souls. Sex is. Regeneration of, is of spirit and soul. The 27th confession of the negative confession is, I have not lusted or committed fornication, nor have I laid with others of my same sex. To free the spirit, control the senses, and the reward will be a, a clear insight. These are sayings from the pyramid or the coffin text, which you call the Egyptian Book of the Dead. This comes from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. In the spirit realm, there is no sex. Negative confession number 19, I have not committed adultery. Be circumspect in matters of sexual relations. That's from the Egyptian Book of the Dead, it's called. Now, let me go back to some more of these positions so you see where they come from. They're all African. Each one of them are African. But the Europeans have defined the positions. They have colonized words. They have colonized the image of God. They have colonized us. They have colonized food. They enslave everything. Everything is their servant, the water. And what they enslave, they must destroy. So the water is polluted, the air is polluted, and you are polluted. And therefore, you don't have good sight as to what you should be doing sexually because all of that's distorted. The positions. Gavin Newt. This is the secret of the philosopher's stone, sexual sublimation, controlling your sensuality. This is another position, which we call, she is in the female position, which is the dominant position. He's in the male position, which is the passive position. This is what that position is about. As the siren of Isis, Siva is the positive a aspect who gives the life's essence and created creative impetus and shikteka is energy creation. This explains that position. It all has spiritual connotations to it, but I'm going to show you the positions much more clear as we move on. Now, there are manuals now for those who really need to know the steps because the Europeans, they haven't gotten this right yet. You know how they write numbers on the floor so they know how to dance. They got manuals on how to have sex because they haven't gotten that right. You know, they have little books. They open them up and say, you supposed to be sitting like that. And I supposed to be like that. I mean, if you have to give instructions on how to have sex, well, maybe that's what I'm doing. Well, let's just move on. <laughs> but this uh, position for sexual intercourse has a spiritual connotation. We have to bring it back home. Uh, let me skip over all of these and just show you the, the positions that are used to treat various diseases. Now then, if you want to treat the spleen and the stomach and the digestive problems, this is the position you use. For problems of the pancreas and liver, especially diabetes, this is the position you use. Usually people pick the position that they are weak in anyway. Not weak in the position, weak in the internal organs. Um, usually people gravitate to the position that they should stay away from. Like an alcoholic drinks alcohol and he should stay away from it. We use those positions that are doing us the most harm. For blood storage and anemia and poor circulation, this is the position. For energy blockages in your 
melanin meridians and for brain aches and poor circulation and menstruation problems and cramps, this is the position. Because you don't want to tax the uterus by pounding against it. So this is the better position because there's less taxing on the uterus. Now for nervous problems, A lot of brothers are nervous, I must admit. For nervous problems, this is the position. When the female organs are blocked, fibroids, the cysts, and you have some kind of other malady, then this is the position that's ideal. And it also helps to balance the hormone level. For water retention, this is the position because we don't want to rock the pelvic girdle for putting more pressure on the bladder four four blood vessels and varicose veins this is the position the one at the top this is used by people that are overweight as well For bone weakness and broken bones and arthritis, this is the ideal position. And for overall healing, this is the position. <coughs> oh, there's more. Now, we're getting into impotency. Impotency refers to men. Infertility usually refers to women. This is the position for impotency and premature ejaculation. Because when the man is on top, it's too much of a sensation, so it's better for the lady to be on top because that way it doesn't stimulate the penis that much. So we want to use this kind of position. Now, some people have vision problems Maybe they don't see that that's not their wife or something, I don't know. But they, a lot of people have blurred vision, so maybe this is the position. <laughs> you know who that is. <laughs> now this position helps the, the body receive more air, draws up more, up more air in the vagina and to the internal organs. And this position down here strengthens the internal organs and the liver and kidney. Everyone sees the pictures? You're, you are so serious. Don't y'all go out here tonight and hurt nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to do with this. <laughs> Are you going to heal everything tonight? <laughs> Send yourself to the hospital tomorrow. <laughs> hospital. <laughs> for blood problems and pressure problems, this is the position. And for lymphatic system problems, this is the ideal position. Now then, I know that the, the ladies know to test their breasts three days after the period begins or nine days after the period ends. You test it according to a solar cycle. But this causes the energy stimulation into the body and this takes the energy out of the body, stroking it that way. So if you have lumps, you want to stroke it that way to get the energy back into the system. Now, I'm just going to speak briefly about sexual intercourse as it originally began. Now, we understand that the uterus is a muscle and it contracts and it vibrates. And when it vibrates, it causes colors and musical notes and it causes electrical charges. The penis gets erect, which is a female posture for the penis and receives those vibrations, musical notes, and colors in the shaft of the penis and vibrates that up to the prostrate. 
Before ejaculation, the frenulum, which is that pyramid shape under the underside of the penis, fires off and causes the contraction of the urethra and the prostrate, which milks out the fluid. And that's what you call ejaculation. The two systems are the same. Remember I showed you the positive, negative, how the, the, the woman and man are actually one and the same? Well, the uterus contracts too. The woman's uterus contracts and the muscles of the vagina contract as well. They contract on what we call spins. We have these spins. We have a three spin cycle and a five spin cycle, which is called a Fibonacci number. Uh, this gets into the spins on what you call the pineapple, where you get the word pineal from. There's two lines on there that intersect each other to form those squares. And those lines go around in a circle, and we call those circles spins. And in chemistry, we call them frequencies. And then if you were talking about the planets, you would call them orbits. You have a male orbit and female orbit on the pineapple. And you have a male orbit and female orbit or frequency of contractions. That's why you get contractions in threes and fives of the uterus and vagina and prostrate and urethra. You get in a Earth's solar spin and a galactical spin because you have in these three cycles plus the galactical cycle all pulsating in harmony, put in harmony by the pineal glands melanin because the melanin is what keeps the harmony and, and balance in the system. Although we know the body is not in balance, your left testicle is lower than your right testicle. Your left kidney is lower than your right kidney. That's because of the spin of the male system. Where's the direct opposite in the female system? This is all dealing with rhythm. And rhythm means order. Because if you have rhythm, you're going to have an order to the beat. When you establish rhythm, you establish order. When you establish order, you establish logic. So logic is based on rhythm. That's why they have a drum in the African classroom. Always had a drum in our classroom, even in college. Without a drum in a classroom, an African cannot put it together. You take the drum out of the classroom, you just about made of yourself a white person. Then the African person stretches themselves and try to put the rhythm in what they say. So we start talking very rhythmically because we don't have the drum. <laughs> and then we start changing the rhythm. What, 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 what you say? See, to you, that's just talking. But to some, say, how did those black people do that? Because we're trying to put back the rhythm in the language because we only learn from rhythm, which means cycle, which means order, which means being civilized. So those same cycles take place in the reproductive act. It's just that they happen so quick. And we think that we think like white people when white people cannot think like we think because thinking is culturally specific and thinking is a biochemical process. No one can think like an African person can think. When you think, you think three thoughts at the same time. You think spiritual, mental, and physical. You can actually see what you're talking about. Other people can't do that. Other races can't do that. And all this is taking place during sexual intercourse. For Europeans, 90% of sex is imagination. It is. And when you look at the little flat ass, you wonder how they can manage it. Nonetheless, all of these cycles are going on so quickly, back and forth, and what harmonizes is you have one charge. When you come together, man and female, it becomes one charge. Just as the beginning, when I showed it to you, we started off that way in the beginning, and then we re-manifest that, that charge again. I don't want to like overdo it because it really isn't all that difficult to understand. It's such a simple process. Uh, I think that's why a lot of people do it, uh, the sexual intercourse thing. But the, the understanding, the complexity of it all, is a different thing altogether. When you come together, you duplicate this charge again. And it becomes one charge, it becomes one cycle. It becomes the cycle of God, the galactical cycle. 
we never associated sex with uh, having children. We associated with some unity with God because we're emulating the God force. Mother, father, God. We become one person, male, female, in the sexual intercourse. That's that melanin again, you know, these things happen. I see backwards and forward. <laughs> now, um, so the, the, the vibrations or the order is vibrated up the shaft of the man's penis and goes to the prostrate. Then you get an energy that energy makes, which we call solotons in science. Then we get a soloton energy, the energy that energy makes. Because you have what you call the regular little energy, the electrons and protons and neutrons that spin around a nucleus. And then when they're doing this spinning, making these frequencies, they make an energy out of the energy, which is what we call a soloton, which passes through us. Those are those black clouds that pass through our body that the white people have photographed, where that melanin out of his face passes through us at a higher rate understanding that the Europeans' pineal gland is 32% calcified by the time they're 19 or 20. Understand by the time they, they're 20 to 29, their pineal gland is 60, 53% calcified. And when they're over 30, their pineal gland is up to about 80% dead. So now you're talking to these Europeans with your full force of your pineal gland and they can only receive 10% of that vibration, you see. That's why it's very confusing to them. That's why they don't understand you. As much as you explain yourself, you're, you're not explaining yourself. Because the more you explain yourself, the more rhythm you get, the more colorful you get, as they call it, the more emotional you get, and the more they don't understand it. So it's the same with sexual intercourse. That's why they have to draw these pictures. They're trying to figure out what it is that we do. They be putting on Aretha Franklin and Marvin Gaye trying to get it together. It, it don't help. They've been trying to have sex with Michael Jackson's records, but God, no. Well, I guess that does help them. I don't know. I ain't going to get into that one. <laughs> I don't know. But people do use music, and the white people use music for this sexual thing. Now, as I mentioned, infertility is mostly associated with women. If a woman tries to conceive and she's ovulating and she does conceive within a year, we consider that infertility. And the nutrients taken for that is vitamin E. Between 400 and 1,000 uh, IUs, I would suggest somewhere in the neighborhood about 2,000. They take zinc 80 milligrams, I would suggest 50 milligrams three times a day. And then we get into other, well, they like to still take organ. I'm just giving you the general formula here. They still take the liver out of cattle and pig and, and take that as medicine. And octocosanol, which is an active ingredient in vitamin E, they take that. A lady who's having infertility, the best thing to do is to get the hell off of dairy and red meat as quickly as possible. Because if it doesn't cause infertility, it will cause fibroid tumors. Just completely get off of them. The other problem we have a lot of, especially with the men, is impotency. One out of four black couples cannot conceive children in this country. That was in 1980. I'm quite sure it's gotten worse. Refocusing ourselves, getting back into an African script is what we have to do. We have to deliberately look at each other's behinds and see a turd coming out of there so we won't look at each other like white people look at each other because there's nothing sexual about a behind. I was in nursing, wiping the behind was never, you know, and after a whole day of wiping white people's behind, I'd be I'm going out somewhere with a brother, he said, you see that ass on that sister? I said, please, <laughs> let me look at something else. <laughs> you know, after a while, you kind of see the stupidity of it all. I and mean, we, we're using the wrong terms to relate to each other sexually. There's a lady singing some song about give me a rim shot. 
Uh, what's a fadu? Fado? Yeah, rim shot means having sex in the behind. That's what it's always meant. And we got our children walking around saying, give me a rim shot. So we're programming, we're being teaching them sex. Feelings are taught. Sexuality is taught. And we got to reprogram the script because the script we're using is causing infertility and it's causing gender problems, as they call it. That's when it's all right to dress up like a woman and do other things, Eddie Murphy. And these other things that, you know, these things that our black icons are doing. The Whoopi Goldberg with her dikey kind of routines that she do. We got to start refocusing this thing because all we're seeing is gyrations of hips on BET and we're not seeing the spiritual connection. We're not, we're not going home. BET is not taking us home with the camera stuck up these ladies behind. Aside from being very insulting, it's just taking us the wrong way. And what I'm trying to say in this lecture here is the secrets to male and female sexuality is our culture. Our culture defines our feelings. Our culture solves our problems. That's where we get solutions to things. We, we can't look into the, any other mirror. If you look in the mirror and, and, and don't see your culture, you don't see the African in you, you, you can't see the African in your sexuality. Going back to using some common sense. When it's a thunderstorm, you know the charges are off. Just before a storm, the grays, if you give the grays, give a test in college, the grays drop. White boys have done all of this research. You're decreasing your chance of having sex during the storm. I was born in 1946, there was a war going on. I mean, now I would say don't have sex during a war, but praise the Lord. <laughs> It was white people fighting, so I guess it was all right for my mother and father to, whatever, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> but traditionally, uh, we wouldn't do that. We want harmony. We want to get a spiritual focus. Because in, in uh, African sexuality, there's uh, another aspect which we call, a, 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 I guess in English, would be a spiritual baby. Sometimes you don't conceive a physical baby, you conceive a spiritual baby. And there's a ritual for giving birth to a spiritual baby. And there's a rites of passage for a spiritual baby. And when you do have these spiritual babies, and if they are not conceived under the correct conditions, they start causing harm in you and harm in your society. And there's a whole way of dealing with spiritual conceptions. Because all conceptions are not physical, some are spiritual. You can conceive of idea. You can conceive a spirit. You can conceive a child. That's how our ancestors thought. It gets a little more. I just want us to be a little more focused and understanding that our culture is what we have to go back to. A manual won't save us. Going back to the diet that we had before we came over here, getting away from the slave sex, trying to get more into the holdbacks, the regeneration, for the men as well as the women is the key to our sexuality. I thank you, I'll answer some questions. Thank you. entertain some questions. Um, Dr. Africa said he'd be glad to um, answer any question you may have about anything he presented this evening or if you read his books, African Holistic Health, which is on the side there, or his latest book, Nutricide. Um, if you have any questions for our beloved brother, um, come forward. You can use this microphone here. Any questions, brothers and sisters? I guess he answered everything tonight, right? <laughs> don't be, uh, don't be shy. Come on up and ask your question. I know you have some questions in your mind. <laughs> and Dr. Afghan did mention to me earlier that this is the first time that this information has presented to the public in this country. So this tape will be circulated nationwide. This is the um, historical moment. So 
I guess this is not any questions. I'd like to make a few announcements. Sister, get a question. I'll check. Um, Dr. Africa, thank you very much for the uh, um, I have one question. My, my daughter um, is about 11 weeks pregnant, and during the first six weeks, she was spotting, and then right around the last few weeks, she was. She thought maybe she wasn't pregnant at all. She thought perhaps she wasn't pregnant at all because she thought my period came on. So she was hemorrhaging. She went to the doctor. The doctor said something about, um, I, you tell me what the hemorrhaging causes because it was unclear to me exactly what the doctor had said was the problem and that it went on to heal itself is what he told her. But I wanted to understand something I could pass on to her that might help her during um, the pregnancy because the doctor you know I don't trust at all okay okay thank you what to do oh okay uh, hemorrhaging um, well could be caused by a high acid level in the system could cause the tissue not to be able to be glued together firm enough which we use uh, supplements called glucosamine sulfate and comfrey and a shepherd's purse to help the tissue to bond together stronger. Uh, sometimes the bleeding during the early stages of pregnancy can be caused by placenta detachment, which is usually caused by uh, cocaine or a lot of sweets, diabetes mellitus or heroin, some synthetic drug like that can cause placenta detachment. Sometimes the tissue itself is so weak, um, usually from chlamydia, probably endometriosis, that it's not able to bond well and so it, was, it would deteriorate. Now, she sounded like she had mid-cycle bleed too. I would say that the lady would need to take some red raspberry and some shepherd's and some go to cola stimulate the pineal gland so the treatment will hold. Take all three of those herbs, the shepherd's purse, the red raspberry, and the go to cola to help stabilize the uterus. Um, the system sounds very acid. She would probably need to take some betaine hydrochloride with her meals to alkaline her system. Uh, your body basically has about two acids, the gastric acid in your stomach and the acid from perspiration. Everything else is supposed to be alkaline in your system, your saliva, your pancreatic fluid, your liver's fluid, everything is alkaline. Your body should be alkaline anyway. That's running to like 7.8 to 7.22, something like that. So you want to keep the system alkaline as possible. And what alkalines the system probably, she would need some fennel, I guess, to help alkaline her. And um, if she's not in the herbs, I suggest the hydrochloric acid would help out a lot because she would take that with each meal and that would alkaline her system. Um, if she's into potatoes, it's better for her to eat the potato with the skin. That would help. But it's a, some sort of a game that the Europeans run. They can't make any money off of you if you eat potatoes. They can only eat, make money off of you if you eat potato chips. They can't make any money off of you if you eat cornflakes and tortillas. If you eat the corn, they can't make the money. They got to get you to make eat <laughs> that other stuff because once you connect directly to nature, you have killed the white man, period. So his game is to separate you from nature with corn chips, corn fritters. So you won't eat the corn. Separate you from nature with potato chips, mashed potatoes, so you won't eat a baked potato. <laughs> you see? So I'm trying to get her back to uh, connecting with that. So I suggest that you, if she's into white sugar, switch her over to fructose, which is white and comes in powder. And she won't mind using it. It's sweeter than white sugar anyway. And that won't overtax her pancreas but from what you're saying she has a drain of hormones running 
I, I, that's what it sounds like to me. I would stress that red raspberry. Mm -hmm. yes, Doctor, could you um, give us an insight into um, educating our children um, into sexuality? And um, what are your thoughts and your, uh, do your studies on in the area of education, of separation of male and female, like all male academies, all female academies, and is that conducive, or, um, negative, or positive? Well, I think uh, the, the children are already well educated into sex is just the wrong way. Uh, all the songs they sing is sexual songs. All the slang they use is sex slang. That's the slang that they slave master taught us to use on the plantation. Uh, so it's just a matter of re-educating them about the sex. And uh, the children really don't, um, it's hard for them to hear you when your actions speak louder than your words. I don't know, I don't know how to really put that. Um, it's a deliberate way they have to see some kind of enjoyment between the man and the woman other than sexual. See, couples sit down, but the children don't see any enjoyment there in the conversation and, and what they do and how they do their budget and how they work together in the house. They don't see that level of excitement in it. That's what they call boring kind of thing. And they only see excitement when it involves sex. So we have to go back and acculturate what we call the routine of life. Be, when you mating, when you're a couple, you have to be in contact with each other's daily routine and, and complement that. The compliments is what makes the child learn. If you're trying to teach a child and you tell the child, um, this, this very young in the child's time to walk, you say, I don't think you should walk right now. I, I think you should let your legs get stronger and, you know, when you get a little older, then try to walk. You don't do that with a child you're teaching to walk. You say, try it. Go on. You can do it. You can do it. So you got to give that kind of encouragement for the child to learn things when they're learning about their culture. Say, no, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. That kind of encouragement. But, but we don't think of that. We, everything else is when you get older, you, you know, you, you, that kind of thing. When you get to second grade, that kind of thing. You know, whatever they're capable of learning and understand, give it to them, bring it on up. But once you start teaching them like retards, the only thing they can actually explore to the limit is sexuality. That's the only thing. So we have to encourage them in other areas so they will explore the other areas just as much and encourage them just like you encourage a child you know, that's trying to walk you say wait till you're older when your legs are bigger and your muscles are stronger then try to walk you don't do that don't do that with anything else no you can try it you can do it and and kind of give that encouragement as so far as the sex is concerned the sex is being taught in the schools on outcome-based education, which was a failure in New Zealand and South Africa and Germany and England, where they taught outcome-based education. That's where they teach the child about their self-esteem and teach them that it's all right to explore your sexuality and give out these books, aren't I lucky, I have two daddies. These books that they read in elementary school. So the, the white people are already teaching them with the little lesbian on TV that has a show, and the gay people on all these shows on television, and, and shit Nene, the little drag queen that the Martin used to do. Uh, they already being taught. We gotta kinda turn it around and encourage them more that, because they don't see us being, you know, sexually as happy as Michael Jackson, those people. When you say in Hotep and Asalaamu Alaikum, they don't associate with sex. I mean, that doesn't even register, you know, because so, we don't, for some reason, we don't attach the sexuality to our culture so the children can see it. They only see it when it comes to the other stuff. But you got to let them know when you say hotep and power to the people, that means you got sexual power too. I mean, you're just as much fun as the rest of the people. But we kind of like 
in the back door with our sexuality in this cultural conscious movement. And the kids are just resurrecting it for us, saying, no, African people were intelligent, but they were also, I won't use my ghetto word, but they were also, uh, they were building the uh, pyramids, but they were also, uh, I wish I wasn't so educated. <laughs> yeah, because we were doing it. And we were doing it good, too. So, um, and these are the systems we were using, but showing them the pictures, where it comes from, the evolution of it, the, the spiritual side of it, it's, it's a help because they, they need to see these pictures more than you do because they see everything else. I don't know if I helped at all, man. But I, I, I answer all sexual questions when the children ask me. Separate education, male, female. In this day and age, I don't think you have much of a choice. We're forgetting we're under combat condition here. We're actually under attack. And we don't have too much of a choice. We really don't. They have to know, a boy has to know what men talk about when men talk and has to know how to act. It's different. A woman puts her hands on a hip, a man puts his hand down here. A little thing like that. Boys have to know that. And they can't know that from a lady because she she, when she's talking to him, she going to put her hands on the hip. You see, so he won't learn just that little cultural thing that your hands go down here, a girl's hand goes up here. Little things that only a boy can pick up from another boy and another man. Even when the lady's trying to be rough, raising the boy, you know, trying to be tough on him, all she's doing is teaching how women are tough. She's not teaching them how men are tough. It's, it, it doesn't work that way. Some things just only a men should uh, define. It's, it's a different feeling when you're a little boy and you put on your father's shoes. It's a whole different thing that goes with walking around in the house with your father's shoes on. It's a whole nother way that helps you define yourself. It really does. And but you got the boys that see the girls all the time and they putting on lipstick now and because you know you got this uh, the, the Dennis Rod, the man that's been rotted, I call him. Dennis Rod man. You know, wearing lipstick and putting on I mean, you've got all these people doing these things. So we we really have to go back and make it seem like being African is intelligent, is sexual too, and is having fun too. And don't leave out any of it. Separate but equal. <laughs> Good evening, our Dr. Uh, first of all, I commend you, excuse me, on the speech you gave tonight. And I've had your book for about seven years. Uh, things I had to ask you is, some of the herbs that you have listed in the book, they're very difficult to come by. Uh, is there some place that you order from, or that I can order from, in other words, to get those? And secondly, I'm trying to create a balance for myself. Uh, I am a vegetarian, but some, I'm having problems with you know, making sure I'm getting the correct amounts of everything. And you really, in the book, it really didn't specify. It said, take this, it has vitamin A in it, for example, but not how much, you know. Those are the answers that I'm seeking, you know, because I'm having a problem creating a balance and it's creating other problems, you know. Too much of one thing and not enough of another. Uh, that's pretty much it. Well, I appreciate the... Uh comments about the book. I didn't know I was that old. Um, the uh, thing with the herbs listed in the book is mostly what we call in the, in the trade a shotgun kind of all the herbs, but you don't need all of them. There are more, there's a wider selection of herbs in America than any country that I've been in. That includes Africa. We have the widest range because these Europeans look for anything that's saved that flat behind. And the herb stores are loaded with herbs from all over India, China. You have the largest selection here in America. If you can't get well on the herbs here, you ain't going to get well nowhere. As far as the uh, balancing, sometimes people have to get a uh, all vegetable protein powder. If they're worried about the protein, just make sure it's all vegetable protein, preferably soy free. And, and get a, multiple, a vegetarian multiple vitamin and mineral. The amount, uh, if I lived in, in this area of the uh, plantation, 
I would probably take double the label dosage anyway uh, of a multivitamin and mineral. As so far as how much your body is going to absorb, metabolize, that's on a cycle. Your body doesn't use the same amount of vitamin A in the morning as it used in the afternoon or as it used on Monday as it used on Tuesday. That's a cyclical thing. And as long as you're nourishing your pineal gland correctly, it will balance that proportion that you need because your body decides on that need differently from day to day, from month to month, according to your zodiac sign and all that balancing thing is decided by your pineal gland. And golden cola and ginkgo and echinacea, dandelion root, herbs like that are good for your pineal gland so it can make that decision of how much. But double the labor dosage and get yourself an all vegetable protein and then you don't worry about that. And eat a lot of carbohydrates, pumpkins, squash, butternut squash, acorn squash. Eat, get into the other carbohydrates too, I would suggest that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, surge in uh, these alternate lifestyles and sexuality um, in, in regards to uh, men becoming homosexual or women becoming lesbian. I think um, when I speak to people, I think that uh, the lines uh, and gender are becoming more and more blurred uh, and it's a result of the, so of the society that we live in. But in your in historical context, do you see uh, a noted difference or are they just regressing back to their uh, their root, their uh, origin? Or is this something, or is it a relatively new phenomenon or is it expanding in terms of, in a historical context? Well, the, the Europeans, um, they basically cannot control you unless, unless you act like them. And we think it's something uh, new coming to it, but when your behavior becomes similar to theirs, then they can control you. They can't control you if you acted like an African. Um, the Europeans historically have been always involved in what African people call a disease uh, of homosexuality. Uh, the problem with understanding the Europeans is we study Greek to understand the Europeans, and that's like studying Spanish to understand French. It doesn't work. The Europeans are separate from the Greeks and the Romans. The Greeks and the Romans said the Europeans were barbaric, <laughs> and they didn't want no parts of them. And they complained to Africa to, to protect them from the Europeans. The Europeans are a total different group of animals that pretend to be humans. And we seem to think that they are humans, but they are not. They have never classified themselves as humans. They say they are evolved monkeys. They have never called themselves humans. And their behavior is a little different from humans, African people. And to us, homosexuality is a disease. To them, it's just the initiation into a cult. That's how philosophers got initiated. They had to go into the homosexual cult. That's how you get your other degree in the white masons. You have to become homosexual like George Washington. That's just part of their culture. And they don't view it as a disease it, any more than them kissing a dog or letting a dog eat out of the plate with them or letting a dog sleep in the bed with them. I mean, certain things come out of their, their culture. But they have to reduce us to the level in which they are for us to control, for them to control us. They, they, they have to do that. We have to become, the Europeans hate themselves. They, they don't like their pale skin, they tan it, they don't like the hair, they curl it. They hate themselves. So in order to control us, they teach us to hate ourselves. And then we think we came up with the idea of self-hatred. That's a European thing that was taught to us along with sexuality along with all this other stupid stuff that we do. The European stuff is so clear. We, we want to be like the master. The master got lip hair, he can comb his hair, and then when he parts it, he has a part. We want to be like our white master, so we shave a part in our hair. Well, our hair was always short. If African people wanted long hair, they would put on a wig. 
The Europeans imitate our short hair and they start getting their hair cut. Then we imitate the Europeans imitating us and we cut our hair shorter. See, we don't see the effects of the slavery thing on us, but as long as we do all these whiteners imitating them sexually, imitating them socially, here's how it works. If you follow the right European ritual and ceremony, the Europeans say you have good manners. If you don't follow it correctly, they say you have bad manners. They're just giving rewards and sanctions to their cultural rituals and ceremonies. And you think you're being courteous. You're only courteous if you're following the right European ritual. If you don't follow it correctly, you're uncourteous. All of this is training us to be like them so they can control us because they can't control anyone that is not like them. It's kind of clear <laughs> to me, but no, homosexuality is deliberate. It is a way of um, population control because two women cannot conceive a child and two men cannot conceive a child. And it's a way of keeping the family destroyed. If you have one homosexual in your family, you're putting the children at risk for developing this homosexuality. That puts them at risk. If one of the children is a homosexual, now that risk becomes a disadvantage because now the other children have contracted the disease of homosexuality. First you have them at risk, then you have someone in your family that they associate with, one of their friends that are gay, they have contracted the disease of homosexuality just by socializing with the homosexual. See, the Europeans have always included homosexuality in their civilization. You, the homosexual white Muslims, the homosexual white Christians, I've been around all of them, just as many gay men in Saudi Arabia and Baghdad, I have seen them. They are salam alaykum you, please. Because it's part and particle of European religions to have homosexuality. That's why you go into anyone who, who follows a European religion, you go into their church, you will find them there. You say, why are all these gay people in this church? Because you're following a European religion and it goes with European religion, goes the homosexuality. So you're gonna have lesbians and the homosexual men in the church if the preacher is not gay. It's, it's the Europeans. In order for them to control you, they must reduce you to be like them. And homosexuality is a, called gender confusion now. They give it other names, you know. Like if you want to go to the toilet, you say, I'm going to the restroom. It's European stuff. You go to the toilet, please. If I'm going to, to I'm going to the bathroom. Ain't no bathtub in that room. See, they're always changing the name, but they're not changing the behavior. So, it's not gender confusion. They are creating homosexualities to keep our structure destroyed permanently. Now everyone is gonna contract the disease. So now we start changing our behavior. You know, when brothers get around some gay brothers, the ones that are straight always drop their voice heavier. Hey, how you doing? You know, so, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so we start adopting defense modes of behavior. You know? You know, even if you're not sexually interested in the lady, if you don't crack on her, the sister's gonna say, I knew the brother was gay. <laughs> that happens, so brothers go around flirting with sisters and they're not even interested. <laughs> and sisters be flirting their brother so he won't think that she hangs out with her girlfriend because she's a lesbian. All this is part of when you contract a homosexual disease. You gotta develop a whole defense mode of behavior and the way of talking and everything. You, you can't say, go girl. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> no, go girl. No, no, don't say that. <laughs> no way, you know. It's, just, it's funny because my grandmother used to get angry if, if my sister, who was a girl, would say, girl, don't do that. She said, don't call her a girl, call her a young lady, because she worked for Miss Kitty, and Miss Kitty used to call my grandmother a girl. 
so she did not allow my sisters to call each other girl because that came out of slavery. Now black ladies are proud to call each other girl. My grandmother was, <laughs> she would, <was>, you know, <laughs> she would go, <laughs> she would, pow, don't call each other girl. You're not a slave. See, we glamorize this disease of homosexuality. We say it's all right. We glamorize these slave words, call each other girl. It's like me calling each other a boy. You know, how long, hard we fought so we wouldn't be called boy. You know, I, I, you call me boy. No, I, I meant Roy. We clean it up. Not that boy, you know. We clean it up now. It's, it's just this disease. And the way to get, a, get around this is kind of, it's a therapeutic process because I treat a lot of homosexuals that are trying to get off of it. I detox them, I hook them up with a mentor. They have to be in a male group and I do certain thought modules. I run them through to help them reorder their thinking. Of course, they can't watch any sex films because they have sexual confusion. And if they see a straight sex act, it's going to stimulate the homosexual tendency in them so they can't watch straight sex. I, it may seem cruel, but I, they can't look at sex movies or listen to sex songs because I have to reorder their sexual feelings because their sexual feelings have been trained a homosexual way. So they have to be retrained. So they, they're off sex movies and sex videos and sex songs. You know, and I let them listen to G Jimmy Cleveland, gospel singer, but then again, he was gay. He used to molest little boys. It's not much, uh, listen to Mr. Al Green. No, that wouldn't do. Damn. <laughs> 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 anyway, we got we got time. Yes, sir. Please stand, Dad. I just had two quick questions. They shouldn't take long at all. Uh, we know the Europeans teach us, or they say that you should have three square meals a day, and we know that this will kill you. We know that this isn't correct. Well, also the national average for sleep of the Europeans is eight hours, which I personally just think is just too much sleep for anyone to have. I was wondering, what is the national average in some African countries and uh, cultures of sleep? How much sleep do they get? And, or that is more natural for us to get? And the second question is, I'm very intrigued by the fruitarian uh, lifestyle and diet. And I was wondering, a person on that type of diet, how often should he eat? And also, what kind of fruit should he eat to make sure that he gets everything that it is you know, the proper nutrients and proteins and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, you, you're talking about sleep patterns, and sleep is partially mediated by a, a hormone called serotonin, uh, which is mostly stimulated during the day, and, and mediated by another hormone called melatonin. Usually, if you're under stress, you're going to drain your body of serotonin, which is going to reduce what we call rapid eye movement sleep. So that's going to cause a disease sleep reaction. Mm. The studies on sleep would be in Weston Price's book. He's a dentist who studied uh, African people's eating behaviors and sleeping behaviors. And what he did was, of course, cannot be done today legally. He would put all the types of fruits and vegetables on the table and let the children pick what they want to eat. And he did this many times and through his observations, scientific observations, within a week the child would balance their own diet. If you just put the right raw fruits and vegetables and all that that you eat, natural foods, they would balance their diet without you even teaching them. And they would not eat as much because they chew more. Children chew more because they learn to chew more from the sucking response. So they would they chew more than adults do now today. So balancing the diet was really not that much of a problem. But the sleeping order pattern has been taken out of focus because of slavery, because of waste retention, which alters the sleep, and because people go to sleep angry, uh, pissed off with whitey and all this kind of stuff, and they usually may eat a snack which causes their adrenal glands to fire off, which causes a kind of dream where someone is chasing you, or you're chasing someone, or someone is shooting you. That's adrenaline dream. And adrenaline usually causes the system to be toxic and reduces the rapid eye movement sleep, which will probably cause a melanin deficiency in itself.
Hmm. But usually it usually uh, would run between four and six hours of sleep. But that's based on a whole lifestyle that goes with this. Because our older black people would go wake up when the sun woke up and go to sleep when the sun went to sleep. There's a whole lifestyle that goes with this, this kind of sleep I'm talking about. And they thought nothing of taking a nap. They call them siestas in Mexico where everybody stops and takes a nap. And, you know, that this was part of the African lifestyle, just taking a nap, starting in the morning, you wake up and then you finished. When the sun goes down, you're finished. Because you weren't doing that reading and stuff at night in the dark. <laughs> you know, all your stuff that you had to do was done during the day and you were finished. And you close your day with a prayer and you start your day with a prayer. It's a whole different kind of lifestyle that goes with the diet. And the fruitarian diet is simply eating fruits, the squash, the peas, the nuts, the berries, which you call wheat, the seeds, which you call oatmeal, the rye, all those in the fruit family. And it's more or less focusing on fruit, corn, and things of that sort, which people don't call fruit because of the fruit tax. And the Europeans changed fruits to vegetables so they wouldn't have to pay the fruit tax. And so we got kind of confused. But we mostly eat more fruits than anything else. Most people eat 90% fruit. But if you told them that, they only associate bananas and apples with fruit. So they don't think of okra as a fruit and tomatoes as a fruit and string beans as a fruit. They don't, they don't think fruit, green fruit. But uh, that's basically what it is. Most of the proteins you're going to eat, the beans and seeds, are fruits. Uh, don't confuse the peanut with being a pea or a nut. It is a bean. Uh, but the Europeans call it a peanut, uh, and it's a bean. They call it Brazil nut, which is a, Brazil is a nut, is a seed, it's not a nut. There's a lot of confusion in the naming of foods that's done by the confused Europeans, because they mostly name things after the sex organs anyway, which is a whole nother conversation altogether when I talk about all the sex-related food. Uh, I guess that's it for this evening. Oh, part. great. I appreciate it. So uh, if you have a book, or you need to purchase a book, have yes. Dr. Africa sign your books, um, you can do that in a few minutes. But also I'd like to remind you, we're going to have a raffle this evening. We have a surprise back there in that bag. So if you haven't bought your raffle tickets, they're two for a dollar. Please purchase your raffle tickets. At this time, so we're going to have our raffle. And let's give Dr. Africa another warm round of applause.